Today we're going to be looking at how you can prove that two lines do not intersect. There are two cases when two lines don't intersect. Number one would be that the lines would be parallel and they would always be equidistant apart. We're going to get more into that in a later video. You can tell if two lines are going to be parallel by looking at their direction vectors. But that's not what this video is about. This video is all about skew lines. Skew lines are two lines in three-dimensional space that are not parallel but do not intersect. So let's visualize that. So you can see that these are skew lines. If you look at it here from the side, you can see that these lines will in fact never intersect. Okay? You can see they're always going to just miss each other and you can look at this from a different perspective. It looks there like they will intersect but once you spin it around and check the other perspective you can see that those lines will in fact miss each other. So in your exam you can be asked to prove that the lines do not intersect which can be a bit tricky. What you're going to do is you're going to use exactly the same process that we talked about in the other video that they would in fact intersect. So what you're going to do is you're going to set up two equations one looking at R1, okay, so we'll do the R1 equations over here and the R2 equations over here. We're going to do, as before, x, y, and z. x, y, and z. Right now we have three equations, but only two unknowns. We're going to be solving for lambda and mu. So I'm only going to use two of the equations. So I'm going to start out by using the x equations and then I'm going to be using the y equations. So if I look at R1, the equation for the x coordinate would be 1 plus 3 lambda. If I look at R2, the equation for the x coordinate would be 2 minus 3 lambda. And it makes sense if these points are going to intersect that the x coordinate on the first line would be equal to the x coordinate on the second line. If two lines intersect, then all of their coordinates should match x coordinates, y coordinates, and z coordinates. Okay, we're going to repeat that process for y. Looking at r1, I can see that my first equation would be 4 plus lambda, and looking at y over here from r2, I can see it would be 7 minus 4 lambda. Now, I can stop there because I've got two equations and two unknowns, but we will be using the last equation, the z equation, later on. Okay, so I'm going to let my x equations equal to each other by saying 1 plus 3 lambda is equal to 2 minus 3 lambda. And I'd like this to look more like a traditional simultaneous equation, so I'm going to bring the 3 mu to the other side. Okay, so 3 lambda plus 3 mu should equal to 1. That's the first equation that I'm going to work with, okay? I'm going to repeat that process for my y coordinates. So if I let my y coordinates equal to each other, I would get 4 plus lambda equals 7 minus 4 mu. I'm going to bring the 4 mu to the other side, so I'm going to get lambda plus 4 mu equals to 7 minus 4, which is in fact 3. Now I have two equations and two unknowns, I can form a simultaneous equation. So my first equation was 3 lambda plus 3 mu is equal to 1. 3 lambda plus 3 mu is equal to 1. That came from equating the x's. And I had another equation from the y's, which was lambda plus 4 mu is equal to 3. Now, I want to eliminate one of these variables, so I'm going to multiply this by, for example, 3. And this is a simultaneous equation. So this would be 3 lambda plus 12 mu is equal to 3 times 3, which is 9. I'm going to subtract these equations. So I'm going to change the signs on the top, so I've got a plus and a minus. What I'm generally looking for for simultaneous equations is to have, for example, a plus and a minus, so these will eliminate when I add them together. 
So this will now be 0 lambda, this will be 9 mu, and this will be 8. So I would get mu is equal to 8 divided by 9. Okay. Now I know mu, I'm going to find lambda. Using the first equation here, I know that 3 lambda plus 3 mu is equal to 1. So 3 lambda plus 3 mu is equal to 1. But I also have worked out that mu is 8 divided by 9. That's going to allow me to solve for lambda. Let's cancel that with 3. Okay, so now we've solved that simultaneous equation. So we have got two values. We've got mu is equal to 8 over 9, okay, and lambda is equal to minus 5 over 9. So at this point you might be saying, um, well, this looks like it will solve simultaneously. But what you're going to do now is you're going to go back to your equation and you're going to look at your z's. And you're going to see if this lambda and this mu will also work for the z's. So you're going to be testing it if you're going to get the same answer if I put in lambda here as if I put in mu here. Okay, so my equation for z would be 4 plus 2 lambda. So let's check it. This will be our 1. So the z-coordinate should be 4 plus 2 lambda. If I look at R2, it should be minus 5 minus 5 mu. So if I substitute my value in here, if I've solved the equation correctly, these z-values should be equal, right? That would prove that there was, in fact, a point of intersection. So let's check. If I put lambda in here, 2 times minus 5 over 9. Okay, so now I get z is 26 over 9. And if I solve here, I would put in 8 over 9. And this one, I would get minus 67 over 9. So you can see that when you go to that third equation with the lambda and the mu, you're going to get a z value that doesn't agree. And that is sufficient to prove that the lines are skew, which we can interpret as the lines are not parallel because their direction vectors weren't multiples of each other. But at the same time, they don't intersect. If you found this video useful, if it really helped you today, I would be so grateful if you would like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.